Hello students, this is the second video in the series where we are discussing solutions and those solutions which obey Raoult's law and those which do not obey Raoult's law. We are coming to the first deviation from Raoult's law and we shall be talking about positive deviation over here. That means positive deviation means again recalling Raoult's law the vapor pressure of a component in a solution is equals to its mole fraction multiplied by the vapor pressure of the pure component and the total vapor pressure is a sum of the vapor pressure of each of the individual components that is what is our Raoult's law now what we have been observed is very few solutions obey the Raoult's law ideally in actual situations we have liquids wherein the total vapor pressure is either above the theoretical or predicted vapor pressure or it is below the theoretical or the predicted vapor pressure or as predicted by Raoult's law. We're taking the first deviation, the positive deviation from Raoult's law. P for positive, P for peak. This is how I tell my students to remember. How do you remember which graph you have to draw? Because this is the problem that children face during the examinations. They get confused. Details we will continue. Now here, PB0 is the vapor pressure of P or B. PA0 is the vapor pressure of P or A. The lines that you see here, the brown line, the red, the purple. These indicate an ideal situation, what an ideal solution should be like. Actually, what is observed is that the vapor pressure of the mixture becomes higher than the vapor pressure of each of the individual components when taken in their pure state. That means, ideally, this should be my vapor pressure. Let us suppose vapor pressure of pure B is 113 and vapor pressure of pure A is, let us suppose, 84. In an ideal situation, the vapor pressure of the mixture should be in between 84 and 113. But when we talk about liquid solutions wherein there is positive deviation from Raoult's law. For example, we talk about ethanol and water. We notice that the vapor pressure of the mixture of ethanol and water goes higher than the vapor pressure of B over here. So we've taken 113. So here the vapor pressure becomes even more than 113. Correlating it to the boiling point. Here higher the vapor pressure, lower the boiling point. That means because higher the vapor pressure means you will have to apply less heat, less temperature in order to make the liquid boil. So when we draw the temperature composition curve we have temperature on the y-axis and composition on the x-axis we have the liquid composition the liquid composition there is a curve over here when we take a liquid of let us say composition C1 here we heat it when it begins to boil the temperature becomes constant because there is a change of phase happening. When it begins to boil, the vapor phase now, if you notice, has the composition C2, which is richer in B compared to the composition at C1. We condense this vapor and again heat it. We have a vapor which is again becoming richer in B. We now reach a composition where the boiling point, if you notice here the temperature for both B and A becomes the same. In other words, by this successive heating and cooling, we are getting a composition of the liquid mixture such that the boiling point of both A and B becomes equal. 
So now we will have A and B vaporizing together. We will not be able to separate till the time the composition corresponds to this point in the curve. Hence a complete separation of these type of liquid mixtures is not possible. The temperature or the boiling point of this mixture becomes constant and becomes a minimum. That means it is lower than the boiling point of each of the individual components. That is why these graphs are also called as minimum boiling point curves and such liquids form what we call as minimum boiling liquids or minimum boiling azeotropes. What are azeotropes? Liquid mixtures which have a constant boiling point, which have the same boiling point is are called as azeotropes. Again, you can start from this end also. That means you can start with a liquid mixture where the composition of B is higher than that of A. In other words, your liquid mixture corresponds to this composition. We will notice here again, heat, cool, heat, cool, heat. Again, we come to this composition where this liquid mixture forms an azeotropic mixture. So, as long as the composition of the liquid mixture remains this, it will not be possible to separate the two. What at max you can have is either a small quantity of pure A or pure B depending upon what is left in the mixture. Because as your composition of the condensate is moving towards B, the amount of A left in the residue is increasing. But complete separation as we so spoke in the ideal liquid mixtures does not happen. Why does this behavior happen? What prompts this behavior? Here what happens is when we are saying that the actual vapor pressure of the mixture becomes greater. In other words, what is happening over here is that the forces of attraction between the two are becoming lesser. Between alcohol molecules there is hydrogen bonding. Between water molecules there is hydrogen bonding. Between alcohol and water the extent of hydrogen bonding is not as strong as in between two alcohol molecules or between two water molecules. So what will happen is the tendency to escape from the liquid for each of these increases. In other words, our A, B at interactions or forces of attraction are not as strong as between A, A or B, B. Now, that means here there will be a change in enthalpy as well as a change in the volume of the mixture when these are mixed together. We are talking about positive deviation. What will be the change in enthalpy? Enthalpy of the mixture will become greater than zero. In other words, the heat is absorbed when such type of liquids are mixed with each other. That is why you will find that you, when you mix alcohol with water, the test tube feels a bit cold. There will be an increase in the volume when such liquid mixtures are mixed with each other. So, let us suppose you start with 10 ml of ethanol and 10 ml of water. When you mix them, ideally you should have 20 ml. But what happens is, here the volume becomes greater than 20 ml. The vapor pressure of pure A or sorry, the partial pressure of B will be more than expected. Partial pressure of A will also be more than expected according to the Raoult's law. And this 
the com the composition becomes such that we are not able to separate such liquid mixtures a third video will follow this which will explain the maximum boiling azeotropes or those liquid mixtures which show negative deviation from raoult's law you will also find a write up on this and on the website learning chemistry is fun google site please do go through it and if you have any doubts please mail us